So you bought your LEV60 cells somewhere else, and now you're wondering how you're gonna make them into our beautiful little batteries here. Well, luckily for you, I don't hold grudges, and I will show you how to make one of these boxes for your cells. Buckle up, because today I'm gonna show you how to build the 148 amp hour Pro Fat box, right? It's a custom box that I designed and that I now offer as a kit, and you can buy it and you can build it, right? So obviously here are what all the parts look like, right? And I'd say you start by, so I recommend that you start by putting the bottom to one of the sides. Is it the side or the ends? I don't know, I don't know how to call these, right? But these are probably the sides, bottom side, top side. And then the ends are here. And you secure them on the bottom by putting the little screws in there. And by the way, you're gonna get these box fully assembled. So you will have to disassemble it and then, you're, then you'll you put it back together. And the reason that we're doing that is because you're more likely to know how to put it together if you took it apart, right? And so the, the taking apart is not that much work and it kind of shows you what it's supposed to look like when you're done. So here, now we're putting uh, those three screws there on the side, right? It's just to hold it. And we're, you're gonna do one side and then two ends. And the reason for that being is that then you will slide your cells more easily in there, right? So the three sides, and then here's the, uh, the other, the bottom side right here, right? So before you put it on, now we're gonna work on the cells. And here are the cells that you bought somewhere else. <laughs> or you bought them in our website, but for some reason you want to put this together. And so the, there we go. So then what you do is you grab the bus bar, you put it right there, and then that will guide you as to the positive and negative posts of the cells, right? So you just match them at the very top in that corner, you know, the positives in the corner, the negatives towards the middle, and then you just follow the, the diagram there that's why those are all labeled like that so just to help you and then notice that their uh cells are two positives are together and then two negatives are together and then and then they alternate right and then the positive goes towards the end and then the last two cells will match and then you put the bus bar in there that just slides in there and it's much easier to do it right now than to wait uh, and do it afterwards, right? So you just do that. Before we do that though, we wanna check to make sure that that fits in there. So these uh, are a quarter inch thick and they have to be that thick to be able to carry the 1200 amps that this battery is designed to fully do, right? And so for that reason, you will have to use thin uh, hex nuts in here, right? And because there's not much room, there's not many threads that stick out past that quarter inch. So we need that plate to be as thick as possible, right? So this is the thickest that we can get it and then still be able to use uh, nuts in there uh, without having to mill that uh, part. And so, you know, by quadrupling the price of it, right? So this is, you know, kind of a happy medium there. It will carry the amps, but it's still cheap enough so that it doesn't affect the price, the total price of this battery, you know, too much negatively, right? So once you do those right there, next what we're gonna do is put the square and uh, bus bar, and that's a eighth inch, right? So that's much smaller. And the reason is because it's got more pathways to carry all that current, so it doesn't have to be quarter inch. And that what that does, it gives, allows you to use the full size nut, has the serrated ends, right? So it doesn't back itself out. So you'll use the regular nuts on this one. Okay, so now we're gonna put the, the bottom side of this and you put all the screws in there. And here I'm showing you what screws it takes. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the terminal blocks into those D-shaped uh, plates, right? And then those little squares are risers because it needs to rise. You need to raise that block above the uh, PCB topper that this battery has, right? So we'll use those screws right there. Those are countersunk on the bottom so they can be flush. And then that's a flathead screw. We have to make sure that they're facing the right way, right? Because the terminal block has bigger holes for a big, thicker wire gauge on one side than the other one. So just match them if you want your battery to look symmetrical. Here are the other ones. Now here I suggest you not tighten these plates because they have a little bit of play and the reason for that play is so that it could uh, 
match perfectly match with with the top plate that has holes in it right and so in order for it to match i would have to put a little bit of play in there so what you do is you kind of finish this whole thing you put the top and then once you find the place then you take it off and then you tighten all the bolts underneath but the next thing that we're doing here is installing that little connector that five pin connector that is for the balancer and here's something very important that you have to do before you install that you have to back up and open up those uh the holes where these screws are gonna go into right uh only then will you be able to install that right so you have to go in through every little screw back it out and open the little hole and then you stick the whole connector in there and then you tighten it it's tightened, you can pull on it. Now you, we test it, we put the battery monitor and if everything shows up good, then you we did everything right, right? You'll have to use two of those little connectors for this design unless we send you a long one. I think we're gonna try to get longer ones so you don't have to do this. But at this point where I'm putting this battery together, we only had the short ones and so that's why I'm using that. But you might get a longer one that is just one cable, right? Okay, so here's the part where we put the topper plate and see i'm like pushing it around to find and align the bolts the holes on the on the top right so those those terminals are moving a little bit here and there they have a little bit of wiggle room because they're not 100 percent tightened and then once you find that then you remove it and now we use the wrench to tighten all the screws now that everything is there now we put the top and now it should line up because you had already measured it and you have already lined it up, right? So now you just put all the screws. Now you can flip the battery over. Now we're going back all the way even to the bottom and we're just putting all the screws now right when you first start you kind of just put one here and one there just to secure the parts uh, but if you have to change anything or take it apart again then you don't have to remove a, you know 100 screws so that's why I recommend you leave this uh, putting all the screws until the very, very end like this once you're done right and so now you know you won't have to take it apart Okay, the last thing is now you just plug in the Batco. And, you know, in order to secure the Batco there, you could just use double-sided tape. You put it on the back of that little unit and you stick it to the bottom um, PCB there and then it's done. It won't, you know, flop around, it won't come out. You could still remove it just by pulling it, right? The double-sided tape is, could be strong, but um, it's not permanent. And so, you know, it's easy. You don't have to use screws, you don't have to use another. It's just, a little little square of double-sided tape there is our battery this battery is very very powerful as you know it could do 1200 amps for 10 seconds or 800 amp continuous right so that's 14,000 watts and it's mainly designed for audio use because well that's that's who needs a very very powerful 12 volt battery but of course your if your application requires a very very powerful 12 volt battery you could also use it it's not you know it's like it's just a battery but people who are using it it's very popular among those right and it doesn't have a bms so when you charge it you have to use the balancer for the first time you charge it all the way up if the cells are not even then all you have to do is just end the charging before any of the cells get past 3.65 and then turn the balancing on and then leave it there for a few hours or a few days depending on how long it takes and then once the, all the cells are leveled then you put it to charge again now if again they all start drifting apart at the very top then you repeat the process then you put the balancing again stop the charge then you put the balancing and then they all balance each other and then you until you can get it up to like 4.8 I think that's the max voltage 
that 4S uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, was recommended, right? For safe or no degradation. That's the cool thing about this battery that's got the built-in balancer, right? So once you do that, you, you should be fine unless you have some cells that maybe are not great or maybe they differ from the other ones. This little balancer should be able to, and the initial balance that you did should be able to stay good for a long time. You know, I would check it every six months or something. You should just charge it all the way up or look at wherever the battery's at and then see how well those cell groups are balanced. And if they're not, then just turn on the uh, balancing feature on the bad go. And that's it. That is your 148 amp hour LEV60 battery. Uh, this is the Pro Fat. And the Fat is just the style. It's the way that it's built. There's other batteries that I will show you how to put together that are exactly the same uh, electrically. The only difference is that uh, they're shaped a little bit different. And those are called different. The really long skinny one is called the Slim. And then there's another one that's in the middle that's called the long one. And then there's like a smaller one version of this, right? So anyways, we'll make videos of all those different sizes and so that you have choices uh, according to your build, right? Sometimes you won't be able to fit this big one in there, but maybe you can fit two of these little ones, or maybe you can't fit one of the long ones or the skinny one, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, go to jack35.com. This kit is available there and you should be able to buy it and then use your cells that you bought either from us or somewhere else and then put this battery together. Okay, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.